Hey everybody, hope everybody's doing well today. This is Bratcher coming to you live via video from the Bratcher Bunker. Today's topic, taxes. Arr! Stay tuned. <laughs> Okay, and we're back. Um, today I want to talk about the, uh, and, and cover the subject of taxes and the types of taxes there are. Uh, many of us get angry about taxes. The honest to God's truth is, if it wasn't for taxes, I wouldn't have a salary. I wouldn't be able to do my job to teach you fine young ladies and gentlemen. So taxes are important. Thank you very much. Thank, thank your parents for me. I appreciate it. Um, but everybody in their life will have to deal with taxes sooner or later. And you guys are probably already dealing with it, right? You go to the grocery store and you buy a pack of gum or something and the, the price says 85 cents, but they charge you like 90 cents. Well, that's a tax, okay? So today what we're going to do is we're going to talk about the various types of taxes there are, okay? So, some of our key concepts. Some of our key concepts we're going to talk about. Use taxes, excise taxes, sales taxes, property taxes, public goods, income tax, progressive tax, business, personal property tax, estate tax, inheritance tax, and gift tax. So a lot of taxes to talk about, okay? Don't worry, we'll get through it. So what is a tax? What is a tax? Well, a tax is a fee imposed by... A governmental body. It's a fee imposed by a governmental body. There's federal bodies, there's state bodies, there's local bodies, right? It's based on consumption, what you use, based on your income, based on your wealth. Direct taxes, these are things that go directly to the government. Okay, these are things that go directly to the government to help the government pay bills. Now, indirect taxes are things charged on goods and services. Those are like the, the sales taxes and so forth. Okay. Some of the taxes based on consumption. Consumption, consumption, what's your gumption? I'm not sure that's how the song goes. Anyway, some taxes based on consumption. These are taxes that are charged on what you use or what you buy. Okay, what do you use or what you buy? These are also indirect taxes. You don't write a check, spend some, send some cash, do a Venmo to the government. This is something that when you buy it, when you purchase it, there's an extra fee added on. Okay, and these are collected to you from you by a business, and the business sends it in. Okay, the business doesn't keep that; they send it in. And these, some items, they may have more than one type of consumption tax, okay? Gasoline, for example. Gasoline has many different types of taxes onto it. You have state taxes, local taxes. Many times you have a county road tax um, just to buy a gallon of gasoline, okay? So some examples of consumption tax. I think we've already talked about a couple of them already. Use tax, okay? This is paid by you who use a good or service provided by the government, okay? This is like state national parks. You, you go in and pay to use a state park or a national park. You go to park at the, the lakefront. That's really a use tax, okay? There's gasoline taxes that, that are, are dedicated to road quality, specifically. They're little add-on taxes, then there's excise taxes. These are charged on specific goods and services. Okay, Excise taxes are charged on specific goods or services. Like gasoline, cigarettes, alcohol, phone services. Notice gasoline is twice. Again, gasoline is one of those things that has multiple types of taxes that are, that are charged against it. Okay? And then there's sales taxes. 
Okay, these are added to the price of a purchased consumer good. Every, you you all pay it. Um, like I said, you, you you go buy a pack of gum at the the grocery store at Tony's or whatever, and the price on on the shelf is eighty nine cents, and you end up charging, paying ninety five cents for it. That's the sales tax. Okay. Now, sales taxes are kind of considered a regressive tax in that it takes a larger percentage of income from lower income people because they're charged the same amount as a higher income person for using the same things. It has less effect on a higher income person than a lower income person. For example, if a very wealthy person has to go buy a washing machine, the tax on that washing machine has a whole lot less impact on their total income than it does mine or yours. Okay? That's why it's considered a, a regressive tax. Now, there are other forms of taxes as well. Taxes, the taxes based on income. Right now, is like income tax season. If you know an accountant who does income taxes for people, this is their busy time of year. Okay? And basically... It's required for both your earned and unearned income. Remember, earned income, salaries, wages, benefits, tips, commissions, okay? Unearned income, those, those are your benefits, sorry. Benefit is an unearned income, but it's also things like interest and investment income and so forth, okay? You have to pay taxes on all of it. There's the federal income tax. Right, the federal income tax is a progressive tax. The more you earn, the more you pay. It's a sliding scale. The higher your earnings, when you achieve a certain amount, you start paying more of a percentage. There's the state tax, and that's a flat rate. A lot of people consider a flat rate as a regressive tax because it has more impact on lower um, income people. Okay. And actually, in Lake County, Indiana, we actually have a county tax, county income tax as well. Okay, so yeah, even te uh, income taxes can be federal, state, or local. Okay, then there's taxes on your wealth. These are property taxes. Paid if you own real estate, you own a home, you pay real estate taxes, okay? And it's based on assessed value, not necessarily market value. Um, Indiana supposedly uses a market-based system, um, but there's all kinds of exemptions as well. Then there's the business personal property tax. That, that's tax on the equipment that you own to make product. Now, this will vary state by state. That's why some states are known to be a little better to do business in than others. Okay, And then these, there's an estate tax or an inheritance tax tax charged by the state okay and this is levied against the estate of a person who inherits money or property okay if you get a large inheritance you're gonna to have to pay some tax on it and if somebody just says hey here's a check for thirteen thousand dollars you're gonna to have to pay a gift tax on it as well well that's what you pay right you pay all this stuff back here right you pay all this stuff, whether it's wealth or income or or sales or whatever. So what's in it for you? What's in it for you? It reduces your disposable income, but there are benefits for you. There's direct benefits and there's indirect benefits, right? Okay. I mean, example I can think of right now today is look at your street. It costs money to plow the streets, and sooner or later they'll get to it, I'm sure. We've had a lot of snow, right? It takes money to do that. You pay for that with your taxes. Your education, you pay for public schools with your taxes. The, the road upkeep, okay? So those are some examples, right? Some direct benefits. Well, we talked about Social Security, right? We talked about Social Security a little bit. Social Security is a system of old age survivors and disability insurance. Basically, it's it's a safety net to help make sure that everybody's kind of taken care of when, when things happen or when you retire. Then there's the public good, right? Government provided goods and services paid for by taxes, right? National defense, public education, parks, roads, 
police, fire, all those things. And then there's three qualities of direct benefits, right? The three qualities of a direct benefit. Everyone benefits. No one can be excluded. And they're not proportionate to the taxes you pay, right? If you're in a low-income tax bracket, you have the same right to use the park as a very wealthy person, okay? If the very, Even if the very wealthy person is paying a whole lot more and a whole lot percentage of their income, you have the same right to use that park, okay? You can't be excluded from using that park. Those are the direct benefits paid for by taxes. Now, there are also some indirect benefits. Some indirect benefits. Again, public education. It produces a higher quality workforce. With a higher quality workforce, we have higher quality products. We have a better economy. Okay? There's government services. You pay less because everybody chips in. Imagine, if you will, if you had to pay somebody to come clean your street. It would be very expensive. But because it's covered by everybody, it's a whole lot less expensive. Okay? Again, first responders, keeping your neighborhood safe, keeping its value. Help to keep keep up the value of your neighborhood by keeping it safe and clean. Okay? So those are the indirect benefits for taxes. So yeah, that that's a whole lot of information to swallow in one presentation. Um we're going to be doing a project about taxes upcoming here. Um, stay tuned for more information on that, but it won't be part of this video. Um, but what I want you ladies and gentlemen to do is review this presentation and take a look at some of the key terms and concepts that we've covered. Please add that to your concept sheet, okay? If you have any questions, please let me know. Please be safe. Um, there's a lot of snow out there today. Shovel your neighbor's driveway. Throw a snowball at your neighbor. Throw a snowball at your brother or sister. Okay? Help dig out your mom or dad. Help dig out an elderly uh, neighbor. Okay? Take care. Stay safe. And I will see you in class, hopefully in person tomorrow. Bye-bye.